Amen. God, God bless you all. Amen. For opportunity to be here um, tonight. You may be seated. To all the pastors that's here. Amen. Thank God to see some friends uh, here tonight. Apostle, Pastor Jackson, God bless you all on tonight. The Savage, God, God bless you. Hey, amen. Pastor Burns, amen. God, God bless you. God have you in the house. Amen. On tonight, bring your greetings from Rhema Word Ministries. Glad to be in the house on tonight. Uh, my, my wife sends her love. She could might not make it on tonight, but I thank God for a portion of our team who traveled uh, with us on tonight. Uh, we pulled up in the parking lot, and all I can feel was the glory of God. Some places you don't feel until you get in the building. But I felt it when I pulled on the parking lot um, tonight. And so that's a sign that you all been doing some outreach. You're not leaving God in the building, but you're taking him outside of the building. I brought with some ministry gifts um, tonight. Um, I wrote a few books. Um, one is entitled, What Do I Do When the Enemy Is Me? My, not my wife, not my husband, not the pastor, not the youth leader, not the praise and worship leader. But what happens when I find out that the enemy is me? You know, we often blame everybody else for our failures. But what happens when you're the reason why you can't keep a man? What happens when you're the reason why you can't keep a relationship? See, it's easy to look out of the window then look in the mirror but when you look in the mirror maybe you find out the enemy is not them but what happens when the enemy is me uh, we have been trained and equipped to defeat the enemy when there's an exterior force but what happens when it's interior what happens when the greatest enemy is not your supervisor or your boss man but what happens when the enemy is me I have part one and part two on um, the next book is entitled when i met me have you met yourself yet no we brag about meeting everybody else but the greatest power is when you can meet yourself there's a difference between self-worth and net worth net worth is how other people view you but self-worth is how you view yourself and when you understand who you are in Christ Jesus and people walk out of your life, you tell them what you took from me, then take from me. I was already anointed before you showed up. I was already called before you showed up. I already knew who I was before you showed up. So what you took from me, then take from me. You didn't complete me, you only complimented me. So I was already completed before you showed up. So if you're going to leave, pack your bag to the left, to the left. Because I know who I am in Christ Jesus. The last book is entitled, I'm Empowered to Prosper. Can you shout that out? I'm Empowered to Prosper. Not to fail, but to prosper. It gives keys to prosperity. One chapter entitled, when your character and your career doesn't match. One of the greatest reasons why people fail in life because their character and their career doesn't match. Why you want to open a daycare you don't like kids? Your character must match your career. You ever met that bad waiter or waitress? They weren't a bad person. They chose the wrong career. But true prosperity saying, God, allow me to work in a career that matches my character. Come on, give God praise. We'll have those in the back after service. They're only $15 a piece. Amen. We take cash, food stamps, EBT, credit cards. Amen. 
Let us stand for the reading of the word. Let us stand. Let us pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your glory. We thank you right now, Father God, for what you're doing in this place. We thank you, Father God, for what you're doing behind the scene. And we thank you, Father God, for what you are doing now. Now, Father, I ask tonight that you would give me preaching power. I pray tonight, Father God, allow me to sit in you so you can stand in me. Close my mouth. Open yours. Use all of me to tell about all of you. I pray right now you would touch every soul that's breathing here tonight. And those that refuse to be touched, you touch them anyway and show them that you are God. Bless those that are even watching online tonight. Give them a word that will bring new life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Verses 5 through 8. New King James Version. Acts chapter 12. When you have it, say amen. amen. Verse 5. Peter was therefore kept in prison. But constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. He was kept in prison. But constant prayer was offered to God for him by the glory place. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers. And the guards before the door was keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side, raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. I say his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Gird yourself up. Tie up your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, put on your garment and follow me. Put on your garment of praise and follow me. Read verse 7 again. And the angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the prison. And struck Peter on the side, raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hand. Amen. You may be seated. The theme is now. Shout now. now. I want to preach tonight as spiritual guide us from this thought in our mind. This is the year I get up. <laughs> this. This is the year I get up. Can you tell your neighbor, neighbor, this is the year that you get up. Come on, find you a different neighbor. They won't pay you any attention. Say, neighbor, this is the year that you get up. Now, if you don't mind, can you make it personal tonight? If they don't believe it, can you make it personal tonight and say, this is the year that I get up I've been down too long I've been broke too long I've been borrowing money too long I've been sick too long this is the year that I get up when you gonna get up I'm gonna do it now when you gonna bless you he gonna do it now this is the year that I get up only have a couple of more months left in 2023 so I might as well get up now. 
I only have a couple of months left in 2023. I don't have to wait until 24 to get up. I got to get up in 23. Because I got some business and stuff I got to do in 24. There are some doors going to be opened up in 24. There's property I got to buy in 24. There's a non-profit I got to start in 24. There's homes I got to close in 24. But I got to get up in 23 in order to walk in my 24. Can you shout? Can you get up now? This is a year I get up. I'm reminded of this story about this guy who owned a zoo. He owned a zoo. And this zoo was very popular for the exhibition. They had four eagles that they would demonstrate showing off their majesty. Showing off how high they can fly. The sad part about it is that one of the eagles refused to get up. He spent his entire time sitting on a limb. This zoo is losing money because people are coming from miles and miles away to see these four eagles fly. But when they arrive, there are only three. And one of them are sitting on the limb, refused to get up. The owner of the zoo, he hired three zookeepers to train the eagle how to fly. They spent eight months trying to train this eagle how to fly. But to no avail, the eagle remained sitting on the limb. He brought in a specialist. And the specialist was trained on eagles. To his avail. He could not get this eagle to fly. A whole year went by. The zoo is losing money. Advertising three, four eagles, but only three of them are flying. One of them cannot get up and refuse to fly. There's an old man named Frank. Frank was in charge of the lawn. Frank told the guy who owned the zoo, he said, if you will pay me, I get him to fly. So Frank, you're not trained. So I, I brought in specialists to teach the eagle how to fly. And the eagle refused to get up. He said, I promise you, if you will pay me, I promise you, I'll get the eagle to fly. So Frank, listen, you only have one job. And the job is to cut our grass. You are not trained. You do not have the experience to teach an eagle how to fly. He said, I promise you, if you will pay me, the eagle will fly. The owner realized he ran out of options. Why not try Frank out? He said, okay, Frank, I'm going to give you one opportunity to show this eagle how to fly. Frank went to the pickup truck. And five minutes later, the eagle is flying in the air. He asked Frank, Frank, how in the world did you get the eagle to fly? When I brought in specialists, specialists, and the eagle stayed on the limb. I brought in three zookeepers for eight months, and he stayed on the limb. How is it that you, with no experience, no education, no background, you got the eagle to fly? Frank began to smile at him. He said, it's simple. All I did was I went to my truck, I got my power saw, and I cut the limb that he was hanging on. I cut the limb that he was sitting on. And when I cut that limb, he had no choice but to fly. What are you saying, apostle? The last season of your life, God cut the limb that you were sitting on. God had to cut some stuff in order for you to get up. So you are blaming the devil. God, it wasn't the devil. It was God. He had to cut some stuff out of your life to get you to move forward, to get you to join the glory place, to get you to step out on what you need. Can you give God praise for everything God took out of your life? 
Can you give God praise for every person who left you? Every job that fired you? Every person that walked out of your life, God allowed it to happen because you've been sitting too long. But I give God praise for cutting the limb out of my life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is about to cut your limb. God is about to cut your limb. And when God removes the limb, you won't have a choice but to get up. Arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen up on us. This is the year I get up. Here in Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Herod is on a spree. He's killing the Jews. He's upset because of the movement they are making. Herod just killed James. James was one of the closest disciples Jesus had. That whenever Jesus did something significant, he would take Peter, James, and John. He just murdered James. Now he apprehended Peter, throws Peter into prison, and about to do the same thing to Peter. Peter is feeling down spiritually. He's feeling down emotionally. He's feeling down physically. Why? Because when you study from Acts chapter 4 to Acts chapter 12, it's been nothing but a headache for Peter. And Acts chapter 3, when the Holy Spirit failed, and Peter began to preach, and 3,000 souls were saved. From then up until Acts 12, Peter been experiencing pain after pain after pain. You discover in Acts chapter 4, Peter was apprehended. He was beaten by people. Then he was thrown into custody. Acts chapter 12, they beat Peter again. This time they threw him into prison. In Acts chapter 6, they were so busy that they needed to select seven chosen people that would help them to serve. One of them was named was Stephen. Stephen preached a sermon so long. In Acts chapter 7, they murdered him. Now Peter has to deal with that. Dealing with being in custody, thrown in prison. Now a man I selected, now he's dead. Now in Acts chapter 12, James is dead and Peter now is thrown into prison but what you have to realize from Acts chapter 4 to Acts chapter 12 Peter was down spiritually he was down but still preaching he was down but still praising he, he, he was down but still moving forward see what your neighbor don't understand about you they see you coming to church Sunday after Sunday, week after week. They just don't even know I had to push myself in order for me to be here. I, I had to push myself. They, they see how well you preach and how well you pray, how well you sing. They see how you can jump from the organ to the motif keyboard and you can play the drums. They see how well you pray and they really don't understand. I'm not even at my best. I'm feeling down and I'm still giving God the glory. But imagine how well I can pray when God God pick me up. Uh, imagine how well I can preach when God heal me. Uh, imagine how well I can sing when God deliver me. Peter was in pain, but from Acts 4 to 12, he's still preaching. Still preaching, and now they apprehend him. Throw him in prison. But Peter realized, I got to get up. I can't do it next. I gotta do this now. I got to get up. Look at somebody and say, I got to I gotta get up. They, they, throw him, they throw Peter in prison. And in verse 4, when they apprehend Peter, they get four squads of soldiers. They get four squads of soldiers. 
um, assigned to Peter. Uh, four scores of soldiers, uh, uh, 16 soldiers. It was common to assign one soldier to a prison, a prisoner. Um, but now um, they are giving um, Peter 16. There are 16 soldiers. Uh, a squad is four. They, they have four of them, which means these four prisoners uh, four uh, soldiers have to rotate shifts. So it was four at a time. It was two um, holding Peter down and then two watching the door. And, and when those four get tired, they'll change shifts. And four more come in. Two having to hold Peter. And then two at the door. When those four got tired, four more came in. Two assigned to Peter. And then two assigned to the door. They had Peter on a 24-hour surveillance. They had him um, watch for 24 hours. Security was beefed up. And I asked myself a question. Why are you assigning 16 soldiers to one person? When, 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 I, when I studied, you really only had one assigned to them. But now you apprehend Peter in Acts 12. There are 16 soldiers assigned to one person. And Peter said, I got to show you how I'm getting up. I said, we're going to show you. Hey, um, watch this. He said, because when you study, this wasn't Peter first time in prison. And in Acts chapter 5, they put Peter in prison. Um, but 30 minutes later, the Holy Ghost came in there. I mean, the Holy Ghost came in there and Peter just walked out. And so now he's in prison again. And so now I got to beef up security. Because I can't put him in what I put him in before. Um, see, see, listen. The greatest threat to the enemy is a person who got up before. I said the greatest threat to the enemy is a person who got up before. You got to tell yourself, I got up. That's why the devil is so mad at you. So you have to realize, you wonder, why is it that you are going through worse than what your neighbor is going through? The devil realized, when I'm trying to get you down, I got to call all the imps, all the witches, all the haters. I just can't allow one problem to hold you down because you got up before. But if the enemy is attacking you from the north, the south, the east, and the West, he realized the last time he got you down, you prayed. The last time he got you down, you came to church. The last time he got you down, you went on a fast. So this time, I got to put more on you to keep you down. But devil, you are a liar. If I got up before, I'm going to get up again. If I, he healed my body before, he'll heal it again. So now that brings me to Acts chapter 12 verse 6. Peter, therefore he was in prison, but Peter, he was sleeping. He was sleeping between two soldiers. See, in biblical times when they put you in prison, it wasn't just for the weekend. They didn't put you in prison until you made bail. They put you in prison until execution. So Peter had almost seven or eight hours to live. And seven or eight hours left to live, he's sleeping. What would you do if you only had seven hours to live? I would have thought Peter would be at the phone booth calling somebody, telling them farewell, river dirt you. I would have thought Peter would have got the Wi-Fi code from the prison cell to make his last post on Facebook. I would have thought Peter would have called his family to apologize for doing wrong. But the last hours of Peter's life, watch this, he's not up fidgeting. Peter is asleep. 
Peter is asleep. Peter said, I had to remind myself. I got up before. I had to remind myself. I've been through this before. See, in order for you to get up, you have to remind yourself, this is not the first time I've been broke. Hold up. This is not the first time I had problems on the praise team. This is not the first time I had people to leave the church. This is not the first time I had leaders to stab me in the back. This is not the first time I had somebody close to me to talk about me. Oh, but devil, you got to realize I got up before. Can you hit your neighbor? Say, neighbor, don't forget you got up before. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, don't you forget you got up before. Touch that neighbor. Say, neighbor, don't forget you got up before. He healed you before. Sometimes you are looking in the mirror. This is not my first time starting over. I started over before, but look at me now. God, I've been there before. I know how to be a base. I know how to be a bound. I know how to be a fall hungry and to be full I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength tell somebody I got up before sometimes you got to remind yourself this is not my first rodeo <laughs> what you gonna do when they leave the church this is not my first time what you going to do when they stop giving? This is not my first time. What you going to do when they stop showing up? This is not my first time. You looking at somebody who been dead and came back alive. You looking at somebody who had to start from scratch. You looking at somebody who had gone, had to pick right back up, turn him around, place his feet on the solid ground. Look at somebody and tell them, I got up before. Out of all the stuff God brought you out of, how can you forget what happened in 2008? How can you forget what happened in 92? How can you forget what happened in 2001? You got to look in the mirror and tell yourself, I got up. They had to beef up security. So they weren't putting a regular man in prison. They put in somebody in prison who got up before. When the devil start messing with you, he's not messing with anybody regular. He's messing with a man. He said, demons come. That brother got up before. That sister got up before. We got to bring everybody because the last time we had them down, they didn't stay down long. He got up. This is my year to get up. So in order for you to get up, you have to remind yourself, this is not my first time. I, I got up before. You know how Facebook had those memories? Sometimes you got to have your own memory. And they wonder why you shouting. I just had a memory. Why are you running around the church? I just had a memory of how I got up. So they apprehend Peter. So we got to put four squads of soldiers around him. We need 16 of them. Because this joker... We got to beef up security because this one, he got up before. And that's why he sleep. Because he understand he need to rest for what he's going to do tomorrow. See, some of you ought to go to sleep tonight 
instead of worrying about some stuff because you got so he sleep prison is locked down security is tight cameras are panted in some kind of way the angels still come in the doors are locked the cameras are on 16 soldiers are watching. The doors are locked. And some kind of way, the angel still comes in. The angel comes in, hits Peter on the side to wake him up. Because Peter's dreaming on how to get up. He's dreaming. On what happened before. He's dreaming on how God delivered him before. He's dreaming on how God paid bills before. He's dreaming on how old members came back before. He, he's dreaming on how God raised offerings before. He's dreaming and the an angel hit him and said, Peter, what you are dreaming about is about to be a reality. He said, wake up. He said, wake up. And when he hit him, the chains fell. He hit him, watch this, and the chains fell. You, you had these soldiers with chains in their hand, and they're holding Peter. The angel comes, hits Peter. And the chain, the Bible says in verse 7, it falls from his hand. Please don't miss that. The chain fell from his hands. The soldiers are holding on to Peter. The door is closed. They got a dead boat on it. And I still got to hold on to one. The angel comes in. Hits Peter. And the chain doesn't fall off the wall. The chain fell off of his hand. Which tells me, watch this. He wasn't tied to the prison. He was tied to people. Before I can free you from the prison, I first have to free you from people. See, in order for you to get up, God has to free you from people. It's hard for you to get up when people are holding you down. It's hard for you to get up when the opinions of people are holding you down. It's hard for you to get up when how they treated you is holding you down. But there is a glory in this place that's going to break every chain from the people that's been holding you down. I'm talking to somebody here today. You should have joined church a long time ago, but people been in your way. You should have been in leadership a long time ago, but people been in your way. You trying to step down from the praise team because of people. You trying to leave church because of people. You want to stop serving because of people, but there is an anointing in this place that's going to break you from the opinions and the thought patterns of people. People didn't wake you up this morning. People didn't start you on your way. People weren't there for you when mama died. It was God. Unless God builds a house, they that labor, labors in vain. Can you shout, God, free me from... 
if you can just free me from people people are getting on my last nerves people are making me sick but if you can just free me from the chains of people I come to church by myself I shout by myself I give him glory by myself I bless the man and woman of God by myself if my mama don't do it if my daddy don't do it if my spouse doesn't do it as for me and my house I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in That was a woman with an issue of blood, bleeding for a long time. The Bible says she pressed her way through the crowd. It was hard for her to get to Jesus because she was unclean. She should not have been in public. But she had to press her way through the crowd. She realized in order for me to get my healing, I got to get past people. Because people are blocking me from getting to Jesus. See, tonight your greatest deliverance may not be from alcohol, may not be from marijuana. But God is about to deliver you from people. And when God deliver you from people, it don't matter what they think about you, what they say about you. God, I'm free from people. If you don't like what I'm dressing, buy me some clothes. If you don't like my hair, buy me a wig. If you don't like my car, buy me one. As for me and my house, I will bless the Lord. And I'm not afraid of what you say or what you think because I'm free from people. God has brought Broken every chain in my Can you shout I'm free? I'm free from people. Maybe you forgot old Lazarus. It's in the tomb. He's dead. Been four days. Jesus shows up. He said, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible said a man who was bound. He came forth with grave clothes on. He came forth bound. And Jesus said, loose him. And let him go. He wasn't talking to just anybody. Because in Jewish custom, anybody could touch dead people. You would be ceremoniously unclean. So they had certain people qualified to mummify a dead body. They had certain people qualified to wrap a dead person and embalm him. These people had Lazarus bound. But some kind of way they showed up at the funeral. And Jesus tells them, you loose him. Same spirit that had you bound. I'm telling that same spirit, loose them in the name of Jesus. I come to speak to every witch, every devil, every demon that's been holding you down. Loose them and let them go. I'm, I'm telling every spirit that's been talking to your daughter, talking to your son, talking to your nephew, loose them and let them go. Every spirit that had my mind, loose me and let me go. Yes, I'm free, but I'm still bound by tradition. I'm still bound by what was, but God, can you loose me? Loose me from the lies. Loose me from the hurt. Loose me from the drama. Loose me from low self-esteem. Loose me from pornography. Loose me from sin. Loose me from hurt. Loose me from grief. Yes, I'm here, but I'm still bound. But tonight, I gotta get up. I gotta get up. God, break this stuff off me. Get this stuff off me. A chance to keep I have. And a God to glorify every dying soul to save that's fitted for the sky. Loose him and let him go. In 
in order for you to get up. You got to be free from people. I'm a, but that chain is breaking right now. I said the chains are breaking even now. I said the chains are breaking even right. I'm getting ready to get out of here. Get ready to get out of here. So in order for you to get up, you have to remind yourself. I got up before. That's number one. You got to remind yourself, I got up before. Number two, you got to get past people. Because you got 16 spirits that's holding you down. And you got you to get past them. Here's the last one. When, when the chain fell, the chain fell off his hands. It's so significant that the writer of Acts, being Luke, penned that the chain fell from his hands. It wasn't that the chain fell or that the chain broke. But he wanted us to understand where the chain fell from. See, it's one thing God delivered me. But what did he deliver me? If you don't know where you came from, you can easily go back. So he said, I'm going to show you where the chain fell If people only knew where you, they see where you are, but they have no clue of where you come from. There's some stuff you can share in public, but there's some stuff you take to your grave. Because you won't even know where I come from. But if it had not been for the glory of God that reached all the way down, when you shouldn't be even preaching and you shouldn't be praying, you shouldn't be in church, you shouldn't be saved, but he thought I was worth saving. See them? There it is. Chain fell from his hand. This is so important because um, Peter was chained. Help me, Holy Ghost. Come on, Pastor Sarah. I got it. I got it. He, he, he's Peter. He's Peter. And uh, they, they had two soldiers at the door. And uh, can you all two come? Y'all two. Yeah, yeah. Come on, and just hold his hand. Come on this side. Back up. And, and, and hold his hand. Now, 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 for teaching purpose, his hand represents a chain. Just grab his sleeve. The sleeve would be the chain. These soldiers, they weren't holding Peter. They were holding the chain. You had four scores of them. And, and they were holding the chain that was attached to Peter. And when their shift was over, can I have two more men, just two more men from anywhere? Um, when their shift was over, go sit down. They got tired. And two more men grabbed the chain. Peter didn't sleep the whole time. But, but, but these men are holding the chain. They get tired. You go sit down. Can I get two more men? The chain is there. The 
chain is still there. And uh, all they have to do is show up and hold the chain. Because Peter is tied to the chain. But an angel comes in. Angel comes in. You can go, go sit down. Angel comes in. And the angel comes in. Hold your hand out. The angel comes in and breaks the chain. Can I have two more men? The angel comes in and, and, and breaks the chain. Two, two more men from anywhere. Hold your hand behind your back. They are coming, watch this, looking for the chain. They can't even hold Peter. They are looking for the chain. The power they have is in the chain. But when the glory failed, when the glory came into place, it began to break the chain. The spirit showed up. But how can I hold him down? When what I was using to hold him down is broken. What are you saying, apostle? God is about to break every chain of the spirits that's been holding you down. There are 16 spirits assigned to your marriage, 16 spirits assigned to your church, 16 spirits assigned to your finances, 16 spirits assigned to your child. But God said tonight, they are... Broken. They are broken. They are broken. Break every chain. Break every chain. Chain of my marriage. Chains of my finances. Chains of my healing. God is about to break. chain has been broken how would you praise God knowing the chain on your finances has been those spirits kept showing up I'm looking for it. I just can't see the chain. I'm looking for it. I can't see anything to hold him down with. I prophesy tonight the enemy will show up, but he won't find anything to hold you. No weapon formed against me shall prosper the reason why i won't prosper because the chains are broken you showed up but it didn't work i need about five people to give god praise for the broken chain in your life i need five people to give god praise for the broken chains in your life Glory, where are you? Glory, the chains are broken. That's it, that's it. Every time you praise, he's breaking chains. Every time you praise, he's breaking chains. Every time you praise, he's breaking chains.
beaten up now because the chains are broken. I'm healed now because the chains are broken. I'm delivered now because the chains are broken. the glory in this place. Listen. I'm, I'm done, but listen. With one touch from that angel. His life turned around. With one touch from that angel was reminded I got up before With one touch from the angel he got past people with one touch from the angel the chain that the spirit had holding him was broken all I need you to do tonight Come and touch this altar and go back to your seat. With one touch, that's all you need. I'm touching this altar. I'm touching the altar. I'm just touching this altar. That's all I need. I'm touching the altar. What my child needed, I'm touching the altar. My marriage needed, I'm touching the altar. My ministry.